Hi folks, it's Mike. How you doing? So, I wanted to tell you my favorite story, show you my favorite story from antiquity. I've got my glasses off because I'm resting my eyes. And uh, some of you may have heard this story. Um, I bet you some of you haven't. But anyway, here's, here's how it goes. It's the story of Archimedes, who was a, a very brilliant man. He's a mathematician. He was an engineer. Some people say others give him credit for being an architect. He lived in the city of Syracuse in Greece in between about 287 BC and about 212 BC. In, in that period of time is when he lived. And there was a king in Syracuse. His name was Hero. How's that for the name of a king? Hero. Okay. Hero um, had determined that what he's going to do is build, he's going to make a crown. And it is going to be a solid gold crown. He's going to put it into a specific temple to honor his gods in homage, in, in tribute to his gods, his, his patron gods. And so what he did is he called a goldsmith, like a contractor, to form this crown. He measured out a precise amount of gold and gave it to this contractor. The contractor goes off to make the crown, comes back a few days later, has got this beautiful crown. And keep in mind that, that uh, the king had told him exactly the size and shape and how, how big around it should be and all the details. He had given him the whole bit. Comes back, it matches the king's specifications perfectly. It's fantastic. King's very happy, gives the contractor a, a, a bonus of some sort, <clears throat> and puts the crown in the temple. He's very happy with himself. He's very pious. Might have been a Catholic. I don't know. Anyway, then there becomes the, the, there, these rumblings start happening of uh, people talking about, well, the contractor really took part of the gold out and then mixed silver in with his molten gold and then covered the whole thing in gold and made sure it weighs precisely what the gold uh, weighed that the king had given to him. Probably figuring that the king wouldn't be smart enough to figure out any kind of weight differences or anything. And the king wasn't. The king heard about this and he was really upset. He was just hopping mad. And what he did, because the, the king, honestly, King Hero, he loved gold the way a fat kid loves cake. Okay? He loved his gold. And parting with this much gold to put into a temple was for him a big sacrifice, and he was really upset over this. So he couldn't figure out, he didn't know what to do. If it's true or not, he couldn't tell. He didn't know. They didn't have CSI back then. So he goes to Archimedes, and he says, and what he, what he said to Archimedes was, I would like you to consider this problem. I'd like you to give it some thought, which is probably ancient king speak for figure this damn thing out. Well, Archimedes has been, he's kind of an OCD kind of a guy. He's famous for being just laser point focused on whatever problem he was working on. And he's just known for that. Well, here he is trying to figure this out, pacing back and forth. He's not eating for several days or whatever time. He's not sleeping for several days. And he wasn't bathing. He wasn't talking to his wife. He was, he had shut out all of his people around him and just thinking on this. My God, you know, what am I going to do? How do I figure this out? And his wife, some people give her the name Thera, but I've never seen really in history where she's been identified, which is too bad, because she's one of the, the smartest women in history. She said to him, Archimedes, take a bath. And in doing so, she said two different things. Number one, she said, go clean your stank ass because I can't stand you no more. And the second thing she was saying is, get your mind off of the problem. Go do something else. Refresh, recharge the batteries. Come back and think about it again. And the chances are, you're going to be able to do better. You might figure this thing out. So, that's what he did. He went and got into the, because they had public baths. So he goes and gets in the public bath. And he, as he's lowering himself into the bath, he notices the water level coming up. And if he pushed himself out, the water level goes back down. 
and it struck him. Right then it struck him. You can determine mass or weight of an object based on water displacement. He's so happy with himself, he runs home, very famously runs home naked. Through the streets of Syracuse, he runs home naked, screaming, Eureka! Eureka! Which is Greek for Eureka! Eureka! Anyway, he gets a container of water, a, a, a big container to put water in. He runs to the king. He probably put some pants on or, or maybe a toga or something. And he ran to the king and he said, I need the exact amount of gold that you gave to that contractor. I have this thing figured out. I swear to you, I'll bring you back the gold. Okay. So the king gives him the gold and he, he runs home. And what he does is he drops, what he, what he does first is he takes silver and drops that exact same weight of silver into this water vessel, okay, which is filled all the way to the top. He gets it all in there. All this water has spilled out, and he's able to collect this water. So he's able to scoop it out and know exactly how much water has come out. Scoop by scoop, he knows exactly it's, I don't know, 11 and a half scoops or something. So then he takes the silver out and he puts the gold in there. He, he had to fill it back up with the water. Exact same amount of water all the way to the top. Put the gold back in there. Then he scooped out how much came back. He scooped up in his little container beside it how much water had come out, had displaced with the gold. And he realized that less water had displaced with the gold than with the silver. And what he was able to tell because everybody knows that silver weighs less than gold, that, that the mass of silver is less than the mass of gold. And this is what he figured. And what he, what he was able to tell was he was able to make a formula based on that, based on the ratio of the two, the, the discrepancy between the two uh, amounts of displaced water. He was able to make a formula, a ratio. And... I mean, it was expressed, I believe it was expressed as a ratio. I'm not a mathematician. I don't know the recipe, but he, he had figured this out. And so he was able to go to the king and explain to him exactly what happened. How much the difference was between the two. And this all came because his wife had told him, Archimedes, go take a bath. Well, the king was very upset, and the, the story goes that the, that the contractor was executed like within minutes the king was just so mad. And the interesting thing about this story and our buddy Archimedes is the fact that to this day, the formula that he used to decide these, these two different displacements is still, it's part of the formula that's used to this day in determining uh, ship displacement in water. Uh, it's used by the Navy, used by uh, repair facilities and and ship building facilities and the merchant uh, merchant marine and commercial merchant services they're able to use this in this case what it is is they're able to, to tell the mass of the ship based on how far the ship sinks into the into the water how far the water goes up on the side of the ship that's why you see those marks on the side of ships a lot those measurement marks how many how many feet they're sinking part of that is to tell weight and of course, we know that uh, maritime authorities, when they want to see if a ship is overloaded, they will look at those marks on the side of the ship. But his formula is part of what is used now, uh, a, a much more complicated formula to determine displacement of, of ships in water. Displacement of water by the ship is essentially what I'm saying. And, and it, it's just it's a really interesting story, and, and I just... I, I think Archimedes would find it kind of funny that his formula is still being used to this day. And so I just wanted to share that with you. It's one of my favorite stories from antiquity. So you have a good day.